Hey everyone, this is Brad with Rev Robotics, and I'm joined today by Kevin uh, from our mechanical engineering team. And I'm really excited to tell you about the 2024-2025 Rev FTC starter bot. Awesome. So I guess let's do some consideration about uh, the piece. Um, that's kind of really the game to it. Right. Um, so tell us a little bit about the piece and what you, how you had to start planning around that a bit. Gotcha. If you notice, the p game piece for this year's competition is kind of like a rectangular prism, but the faces are inset like little triangles. And so that makes it kind of interesting on how teams will interface and interact with these pieces throughout the entire match. And so one of our main focuses was getting an intake that works. You see a couple of the new products that we have in yeah, our, our starter our, kit. Yeah, our dual flap wheels have mm -hmm. been introduced to the FTC starter kit version 3.1. So these are the medium durometers. Um, so they have good amount of flexibility, but a good grip. Um, they also have little cut indications there, so you can always cut them down and make it even on both right. sides, depending on how your intake kind of functions. Getting into this intake, we have obviously a servo in continuous mode, I assume? Yes, continuous mode servo. And that's all placed on standoffs with our plastic sheet to create a really nice versatile intake that teams can slide in, prototype with, and really helps the adjustability and the intake flap be wheels being so versatile really makes it easy for a game piece to come in and stay in once they're intaked. All right, so, so planning around, we have to have a solution for intaking this, obviously because of the odd shape. Um, you told me that you kind of treated this really as a, as a cylinder initially, a cylinder. right? So that kind of helped you kind of have a basis of how to implement what you're used to in order to start like a starting point, I guess. Exactly, to, to exactly. Yeah. Okay, and so then this obviously is now on basically a wrist, right? So this yes. is our wrist component that we have here. Um, so this is able to kind of fold out of the robot yes. in order to come in because what we basically have a challenge, right, to get to the piece. How do you get to the piece and why is this necessary? So one of the really interesting parts of this year's game is that the samples are cordoned off in their own little area in the submersible. And in order to reach over that two inch wall, our robot was built with an arm and pivot on the wrist to reach over and intake effectively. And so on this wrist joint, you'll notice that we have another mechanism right here. It's a claw for once you've delivered the samples to the observation zone and human players have clipped them onto the wall, we need a way for the actual robot to grab them off the wall. And so we were pretty creative with these, st with these standoffs and the motor brackets to create a nice, really compact gripper solution that I think teams will love. Brad, do you want to tell us about these standoffs? Well, yeah, so like these standoffs are obviously new to the kit, and it gives you a lot of versatility with doing some of these different mounting operations and, and basically enabling some of these new builds that we've not been able to do before. The thing that really is interesting to me about the claw is actually your actual gripper itself is basically built out of bent motor plates. Right. The thing that's so ingenious about it is it, how it just kind of perfectly grabs the piece there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really allows you to kind of slot in there and, and keep control of it. And I know initially you had designed, like the very first version of this robot, you had, you're using very different things. Instead of a normal kind of gripper, you might have like, you know, surgical tubing or something right. along those lines. Right. You were experimenting with gears and sprockets and, and that was really cool. But I, I think you coming to this solution was really inventive and I really like kind of the way you did that. It was really important to the engineering team that once we grabbed this sample or specimen that we never lost it. And because of the shape of the, the, sp the specimen, it allows us to make sure that we don't need any extra grip from surgical tubing and a really clever solution with motor brackets fitting exactly in there really helped that grip. Yeah, aspect. awesome. And, and so this servo is a, you know, a standard rev smart yep. servo, yep. smart robot servo. How is this set? Is this, is this default uh, settings? It's not continuous. not continuous. It's angular. Is there any play you have to do with this? Do you need to, to program it? So with the starter kit comes the SRS programmer for the servo. And it's a really useful tool that we can use to set the positions of these claws without touching any bit of software in the robot. And it allows us to leave the claw open after we've assembled it, program it to that position, program it closed, and then in our code, all we have to tell it is zero and one, and it goes to those specific locations, which made debugging and building the starter bot a lot easier. Awesome, and so getting back to basically this wrist movement that opens up the intake here, um, 
the thing that is actually powering this is we have our, our core hex motor, right? Yes. Um, so the core hex motor, and I see that we have chain. So why did we uh, pick chain here? So the choice for chain was a lot due to the fact that gears and gear meshes within mm -hmm. our system, under a lot of load, they, come, they can slip and cause a lot of frustration to teams. And so in order to avoid that this year, we put uh, chain and sprocket at this wrist joint since it's experiencing a lot of the di dynamics of the field and the robot moving. And so we really wanted to use the extra chain that we have from our drivetrain here. And it, we believe it's a really nice solution. Teams can keep it tensioned by sliding on the extrusion and no need for accurate gear meshes or anything like that. Awesome. And we just have some kind of supporting members here to right. kind of brace this structure. Um, we have very nice cabling that is nice and cleaned up. Of course, it's always dependent on where you <laughs> have to get your motors. And since we're extending all the way out, we have a servo, and I assume at least one extension here for that yep, servo. Yep, one extension servo cable. Awesome. And um, there is a thing to note about the shaft material. Um, so in this in this build, this version of it anyways, mm -hmm. um, I noticed that we have all our shafts cut kind of more for aesthetics and just for right. cleaning it up so it right. doesn't hook on anything. But really, you only need to cut one shaft, One correct? shaft. And that was kind of like a happy accident that we realized in our build process. In order to get this wrist to fit inside the starting configuration of the robot, we needed to cut this shaft right here for mm -hmm. that wrist pivot. And so when cutting the shaft, we realized that we did not have a shaft long enough in the starter kit to create our intake. However, the one leftover shaft from this cut operation could be reused here at the exact length. And it turned out really well, and we're really happy with it. And really hoping that teams cut that shaft and really use it for their intake, and they don't have to touch anything else, which is really nice. And so, so really, outside of the, the starter bot you know, 3.1 kit and, I guess, the control bundle, mm -hmm. uh, which would go with this to give you all the electronics you need set up, um, you only have one cut and nothing outside of that kit, which, right. is, which is really great. I mean, you do have to, I guess, cut the, the plastic for the intake section, but other yeah. than that, there's yeah. a lot, no real modification, which is nice, because then you can always reuse these parts year over year exactly. for, different, for different applications. So now, going up on the arm, we have some big, meaty gears up here, and I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it to this side where the, the real workhorse is over here. Um, so tell us a little bit about this gear train and how, you know, what's going on here. So. A couple of the game objectives this year require a lot of heavy arm motion in order to reach really high into the buckets, score on the chambers, or even hang. We wanted to create a really robust, reliable gear train system that teams don't have to worry about fiddling with, and they get it right first try. And so here we have a pretty heavy compound gear train that takes our new included HDX motor with the Ultra Planetary 60 to 1 reduced further with our compound gear train right here. Do you want to talk a little bit about the Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's great that we're, you know, able to not only have the two HD hex motors and, and the Ultra Planetary for drive, which we normally would include, but we're now, since we're including this extra motor, mm -hmm. you're getting that extra power, you're able to really have a very robust, longer arm, essentially, because you're able to power it. Um, so I think it's great that we have this use case in here of using this extra power that we're gaining from this. Um, so we have an extra reduction here and then another stage here. Right. Um, so that's the compounding of it. And then, of course, it's also kind of basically on a jack shaft system so that the gears are coming to this side, so we're evenly kind of doing mm -hmm. the lift, um, which has really made this whole arm um, pretty, pretty stiff. Pretty sturdy. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And, you know, it's, it's able to almost hold itself almost. up, which is great. So as we come down to the structure here, I see we also have some support pieces here. Right. And that's just to strengthen this up and keep it from flexing and, and kind of keep it attached to the frame. We do have our electronics mounting kind of center of the robot, kind of keeps it all compact and the wiring kind of is able to come down to the back here. And so let's talk about the drivetrain now. So the base of the robot, um, kind of what, is there any differences to this? Is this kind of our standard? What, what do we have going on here? Right. So before we move on to the drivetrain, I just okay. wanted to mention that a couple, the reason we centered the battery and the control hub this year is because with the long reach of the arm and stuff, tipping is a big problem for teams. And so we pretty much wanted to show the right way teams should allocate their weight towards the center and look pretty low in their robot. And so that's all built onto our drivetrain, which is pretty interesting. It's a C-channel drivetrain. Uh, but the C-channel is actually moved further into the base of the robot to let that space for the arm and wrist pivot subsystem to actually exist. 
and we use chain on that drive, which powers all six of the wheels, but the Omni wheels are in the back to allow the rotation of the robot drive train to be actually towards the front, where you actually care about. And uh, it's pretty robust and way, way more powerful than it needs to be. I mean, it, it, it feels really solid, and in, in the driving, it has done just a fantastic job. The, the fact that it's, it's able to kind of do essentially every operation of the yeah. game, right? Yeah. We're, we're able to corral pieces, move pieces. We're able to intake pieces from the center of the submersible or the center of the field. We're able to get them in, get them to at least the, the first level bucket. We're able to you know, pull a piece off the wall that has been clipped and actually hook that on the highest chamber, which is fantastic. Yep. And then it, it is even capable of doing a climb. Yep. And, and the fact that it can do that is just phenomenal. Um, I'm really interested to see how teams kind of take either these concepts or their own concepts and see what kind of comes with the game and how they proceed. Um, yeah, I'm really excited as well. A couple of the key points that I'd like teams to pay attention to is how they can improve intakes, how they can add extra hooks for hanging, and uh, even b building a better claw. I, we're really excited to see how teams take that challenge. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us. Um, I'm super excited about this year's uh, FTC game, and um, we'll see where everyone else goes with it. Yeah, we're really excited. Thank you so much. If you are just as excited about the Into the Deep Challenge and the 2024-25 Rev Duo FTC Starter Bot as we are, you can find more information on our website at revrobotics.com and additionally find the full CAD, build guide, code overviews, and more in our documentation at docs.revrobotics.com. Feel free to leave a comment on this video or reach out to our support team at support at revrobotics.com. Good luck and we will see you on the field.